Divorce lawyers of Reddit, what's the most outrageous reason someone filed for divorce? Taught the parakeet certain cuss words for his wife. Ha ha ha. The parrot lives with the man now. Colleague handled a case where money was not an issue but the kids were. Neither parent wanted them. Was allowed to at the dinner table. He developed a complex and literally needed out as he couldn't bear to eat with her. Edit. This has gone gangbusters. Thanks guys. My dad was a divorce lawyer. He had a client who wanted to divorce her husband for two reasons. 1. He did not have enough hair on his chest. 2. He did not drive fast enough. Keep in mind this was in the 70s when chest hair was a bit more important. Wasn't the reason but did happen during the course of the divorce. Neither side would follow the court orders. When they had to go back to court they were fighting over a pistol and the man's grandmother's bowls. I assumed for weeks that these bowls were some sort of heirloom more expensive china. When they finally brought the bowls in to swap they were ducking Tupperware. I worked for a law office where the owner would talk about the man who sued for divorce because his wife would no longer allow him to use a loaded gun as a marital aid. She had apparently agreed to it at some point and was fine with the gun as long as it was empty, but that just wasn't good enough for him. Eater, since some folks need it spelled out. By marital aid, I mean a dildo. He wanted to stick a loaded gun in her V as part of physics routine. She was down for it as long as the gun was empty, but that wasn't good enough, and he thought this was reasonable grounds for divorce. Also, I wasn't trying to be pretentious by saying marital aid, I just really didn't want to have to type out that he wanted to use a loaded gun as a dildo, but I guess nobody's leaving this thread happy today. My client was the outrageous one. So my heart went out to his poor wife. He had OCD which manifested primarily financially. So he made their lives a penny pinching hell. Examples. He was obsessed with avoiding unnecessary driving. Wear and tear on the car. Gas expenses. So he cut the whole family's hair at home and never let them eat at a restaurant or go to the movies. Weirdest of all, he kept one toilet paper roll on him at all times and you had to get one square from him before you could go to the bathroom. He never gave more than one square. Wife finally got fed up and left him when one, he gave her bangs during an in-home haircut and two, their daughter was so traumatized by the toilet paper thing they couldn't potty train her. Also, he hated paying his divorce lawyer bill. He was also an old-fashioned mega-catholic who considered divorce a deadly sin. He viewed my whole job as an unnecessary and sinful expense. I had some friends get divorced because she legit hated Dale Earnhardt and he legit hated Jeff Gordon. He had an argument with the new in-laws during the wedding and moved out at around 5am during the first night. I was a legal assistant when this case came in, but this lady divorced her husband of 2 months because he got her an iPad case for her birthday instead of the expensive jewelry she wanted. Paralegal here. Still remember an early case I worked on. Man divorced his wife for her bingo addiction. 10 to 12 times per week she went to bingo. She was 82 he was 86. But the all time greatest. 220 somethings. They were irreconcilable because he kept smoking her weed stash when she wasn't home. My client put his wife in an assisted living facility based on a misdiagnosis. The medication of which caused the wife to be unable to care for herself. While in the facility, my client Shocker started dating another woman and Mythinks began using hard drugs. He used a loot of money on both of these things. She eventually got off the medication and got better. Suffice to say, she was not happy about what had transpired. He got drunk at the wedding. She did not like it and decided to divorce him right after the honeymoon, which she went without him. Moreover, this was all an elaborate scheme of divorce robbery because the guy was loaded and so was his entire family. They were loaded because they were a family of excellent lawyers and he was a third generation lawyer with all the smarts and experience of his predecessors combined. Let's just say it did not go well for her. Not a divorce lawyer but used to practice criminal defense work. Once had a heavily pregnant client that attacked her husband, of less than a year, with an iron. Said client was now sitting in a police cell, sobbing and insisting that her husband deserved it and she wanted a divorce. I asked what he had supposedly done. 
assuming he cheated or something similar. Turns out he checked his phone and found a single porn site in his browsing history from over two years beforehand. Not the most pleasant thing to discover, but hardly worth battering him half to death and demanding a divorce. I didn't like her anymore two days after being married. My grandfather's brother was a judge who presided over state issue marriages from time to time. One couple he married returned six months later to confirm the wedding and end their trial marriage. When he thusly informed them that there was no such thing and that they had been married for six months they subsequently broke up. Friend of mine divorced his then wife because she would only speak French when her family would come over. She was Spanish, as was her family. To add, her family spoke English, French and Spanish. He could only speak Spanish and English. She got bored of being married to him. Her family basically talked it about him whilst he was there. Was only when he recorded a conversation whilst they were there and got it translated he found out what was going on. Edit. Oopsie. Not me. But a friend my mum has divorced her husband because his mother still coddled him at age 40. With his consent. They lived with his mother, common in Asia. By coddle I mean that she would walk straight into their room after his shower and powder his back for him. They couldn't lock their bedroom door because his mother would come in as and when she wanted. If they locked the door, she would knock repeatedly asking what they were doing. Lol what would they be possibly doing? Playing poker? I knew a guy from a high school job who divorced his wife of 2 months because she would sleep with a nightlight but he could only sleep in total darkness. As they apparently never lived together until after getting married. He hated her nightlight so much that he would often sleep on the couch instead. But sometimes he would claim the bed for himself and lock her out of the bedroom for the night. This was an eccentric late 40s man working at a Burger King who acted like all the other high school co-workers were his best chums. And often told us these weird stories. I'm glad I don't work with him anymore. Staff attorney for a judge. Not a divorce but a custody modification hearing. Ex-wife wanted sole land custody of the kids because the ex-husband was spending all his money on a palm reader psychic and refused to pay child support. On cross. Ex-wife's attorney got him to admit that he was spending all his discretionary income on this psychic. He said he had spent over $5,000 on readings and other services there. Judges frequently chime in with questions and domestic matters. So my judge asked why he was not paying support as his divorce decree required. His explanation was I, the psychic could read that his children were provided for without his money and I I. He would be able to repay the ex when he takes the children to Mexico permanently to seek great riches there. Which my judge read as my psychic told me to kidnap my kids. TL. DR. Deadbeat ex-husband spent all his money on a psychic rather than child support. Told the judge he intended to kidnap his children. Edit. Words. Failed exorcisms. Client had an inner ear condition that caused chronic vertigo. But symptoms could be treated with medication. Husband was an evangelical who was convinced his wife one had become possessed and that her vertigo and general crankiness with his methods were evidence of demonic possession. 2. The medication she was taking was enabling the devil to hide inside her. And 3. The only proper recourse was exorcism. He would hide her meds until she got dizzy and then try various methods of exorcism. This included sweating it out, put under blankets while incapacitated and locked in a room full of space heater. Freezing it out, pretty much the reverse with AC, fans, and bags of ice. Surprising it out, he would jump out and scare her like it was the hiccups. But instead of yelling Osabu he would recite the Lord's Prayer or Psalms. The final straw was that he tried to Osa surprise it out of her by pushing her down the stairs when they were heading out for dinner. Note, this guy was some type of executive and they still went out to dinner after the stairs incident. She asked for the divorce at an Applebee's that night. I have often tried to picture that conversation, as she was adamant that he was a total sweetheart and never acted out of malice or anger. Not a divorce lawyer, but I had a friend whose parents divorced for irreconcilable differences over time spent playing of her quest. Now, but my old neighbor divorced his wife because she no longer wanted to dye her hair blonde. Probs more reasons, but that was his final straw. Now. But the story of the couple in Algeria always gets me. Groom sees his new wife the morning after the wedding without makeup. Takes her for an intruder. 
and proceeds to sue for over $10k for psychological trauma. This is more sad than outrageous, but some of my colleagues specialize in elder law and more people than you think get divorced on paper in the US in order to receive Medicare benefits without having to lose their home. See for example this article, edit, Medicare Medicaid. I worked as a paralegal for a divorce lawyer. Case analysis was one of my main responsibilities. I it you not, a recently married couple, of two years, broke it off because the husband would not stop feeding the dog. The dog got outrageously fat. Apparently she saw connection between the dog and future children. My 90 year old client, the husband, and his son retained me to initiate divorce proceedings with his 88 year old wife. They'd been married 60 years. The wife had recently taken to beating him with his own cane because their daughter poisoned her into thinking he was hiding money from them. The battle came down to husband and son versus wife and daughter. At their first court appearance, my client showed up in an old 1950s style pinstripe suit and fedora. He was a farmer his whole life, and this was clearly the only suit he owned. He was such a meek and lovely old gentleman. I had to pass my client onto a new lawyer midway through the proceedings because I accepted a job in a different country. But I understand the divorce was eventually granted. I got into scams because of a lawyer in my old office represented a woman whose husband left her because she got involved in a romance scam that started as a pen pal. It was a weird marriage. He was clearly a closet gay who married her for her money because she was ugly as all hell. They kept separate lives for 30 years. She began corresponding with someone she believed was a 3 star general serving in Afghanistan. It went the typical way scams like this do. She fell in love and he needed dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign to move from Afghanistan back to the United States. She eventually would transfer him about $70,000 over the course of 8 months. Even when my friend brought me into the conference room to lay out the case as being a scam. For which I had piles of proof for. She continued to transfer money including a $8,000 transfer the day after. The judge ruled she owed her husband dollar for dollar what she gave the scammer. So $70k plus he issued a temporary restraining order barring her from transferring marital assets. My friend dumped her as a client when she showed interest in appealing the tro and trying to expedite her divorce so she could marry the scammer. Paralegal. A couple got divorced over a cat. Wife called cat snowball because of white fur and only wanted the cat to eat wet food or chicken breast. Husband called cat lily again because of white fur and believed it should only eat dry food. These two argued for a year over custody of the cat but did not give a rit about their human kids age 15 months, 4 years, and 6 years old. Worked in matrimonial law for a year and a half before I had to leave BC it just overwhelmed me with how awful humanity is. I'll never forget filing papers that described her soon to be ex-husband's behavior. Including, masturbates on the living room couch without closing the door and leaves sticky tissues everywhere with further description of their three young children potentially walking in on him. Knew a couple a little over a decade ago who I was close friends with. The wife wanted children and after several months of trying plus a doctor visit later he was found to be infertile unable to have children due to his sperm. She filed for divorce several weeks later. Then one random hookup later she got pregnant from a one night stand while the proceedings were still going. He used that in the court battle which assisted with him taking the majority of their possessions post split due to her actions. I do my student practice at my family's law firm. Young woman filed for a divorce because her husband drank one beer during weekdays after a day of work. The guy wasn't violent, doing drugs, or anything like that. He was just a normal. Polite guy who liked to have a cold one after 10 hours shift. They are very good couple and argue so rarely that this woman's friends told her to write down everything he did to upset her and reread it every day. So she had reasons to be angry about. My mom, lawyer, set the woman straight. Told her he just doing what all guys do and to find herself new friends instead of ones ready to sabotage their marriage. Kind of in the same category. I've had a lot of younger male potential clients come in for divorce consults with their mother. Then, during the consult, the mother does 98% of the talking, and it's clear who actually wants the divorce. 
I'll usually escort mom to wait in the lobby while I talk to the son directly, and most of the time he's just there to appease his mother. On a related note, I once had just a mother call for a consult because she said explicitly she wanted her son to get a divorce. I politely informed her that's not how divorces worked. Edit. Because I apparently don't know how to italicize things on Reddit anymore. Most people are interpreting outrageous as an overblown minor annoyance. But I'll put one out there on the other end. When I was working at the DA's office, there was a woman who had sex with her son's 15 year old friend. The awkward part was that the husband was the high school baseball coach for both of the boys. My job at the time involved going through the evidence, including all of the text messages, where they eventually decided upon divorce. The only thing I really recall is that the man interrupted the text conversation about the affair to say BRB. I'm going to get him a crib. The texting resumed about 40 minutes later. Needless to say, criminal law is weird and I decided to pursue another specialty. I'm an intern but the judge I work for used to do divorce work. He has some crazy stories but this one is probably the most outrageous. Though the divorce was pretty justified. Every morning this couple would sit in the bathroom together while one of them had their morning dump. One would sit on the toilet and the other on the rim of the bathtub. This particular morning the wife was on the toilet and husband on the edge of the tub. They started to argue about their relationship so the wife reaches down. Pulls her tampon out and flings it at husband. I'm told the tampon stuck for a brief second to his forehead before sliding off. He filed for divorce that same day or the next. Edited because I don't know what words mean. I know a couple. Both lawyers. Got separated because of the husband can't stand the wife's loud and energetic personality. Not a divorce lawyer. But got out of my first marriage because shortly after we got married he decided he didn't like the way I talked. And asked me not to talk when we were out in company unless I could talk straight. My aunt had a case where the wife had glued all of the outdoor hoses together so he wouldn't spend more time washing his vehicle anymore. When the glue didn't work she just cut them all up. When he bought new ones A filed for divorce. Client's husband was divorcing her because she had transitioned from a woman to a man. Then back to a woman again after regretting the first transition. The husband realized he preferred men and couldn't cope with the second transition back to a woman. Two great people who just couldn't make it work together I have to add. I represented a porn actress webcam model who filed for divorce from her husband who also did the porn webcam model business. He would do gay porn on the side because the pay was better. She was hesitant about it, but dealt with it because the pay was decent. Both sides had an agreement that it wasn't cheating as long as it was for work. One day she came home early and found her husband in bed with two men. They were not filming. That was too much for her. Needless to say, the old conservative judge couldn't wrap his head around this one. My aunt was dating an unemployed dude for a while. He was staying in her house rent free. They got married and were getting ready to go on the honeymoon when the new husband tells her he's not going because he has to take care of his plants at the house. Big fight. Aunt goes on the honeymoon with her sisters instead. She comes home and tries to kick him out of her house. He refuses to leave. She tries to get the police involved. Dude is live streaming on Facebook how he is being trapped in his own home. Police tell my aunt there is basically nothing they can do. Can file for eviction after a divorce. Dude gets to live in her house with his precious plants for like 3 months until everything legally gets worked out. Not the most outrageous, but I had a client incur about 20 additional hours of billable hours because he and his ex-wife were battling and went to trial over their Star Wars collection. This was the only issue at trial. They were able to work out custody, child support, the house, but the Star Wars collection went to trial. The judge ended up splitting it in the most asholish way possible. Basically giving each side half of what they wanted and then mixing and matching everything else and breaking up collections. And speaking about it at a conference. The judge admitted she did it because if they were going to act like children, she would treat them like children. The thing is, the value of this collection was over $100k. So hardly kids stuff. Neither side had it in them to appeal. Nor was the case law on either side given judicial discretion in property distribution. Not a lawyer but one of the divorce here in India was filed when the girl found out that the guy was from a lower caste and she was a Brahmin. 
cast of the priests. Divorced guy here. I divorced my ex-wife because she decided to be a Ossisipa Christian that spent hours each day lying on the floor speaking in tongues. Also she would have random conversations with former deceased relatives while doing mundane daily activities. The final straw was when I came home from work and my two years old daughter was in the fireplace eating ashes two feet away from her while she laid on the ground chanting and speaking in her made up language. I'm not a lawyer but I was once buying a computer from someone on Craigslist and when I got to his house it was full of computers everywhere. There were monitors laying on the floor and half built computers laying around. Full built computers all over the place. And I'm talking expensive gaming computers not your everyday all in one computers. We got to talking about why he had so many and the guy said he was just obsessed with them and he confessed that the reason his wife divorced him was because she said I was too obsessed with my computers. My great great grandparents had an interesting case. He was abusive. Like pimp her out and then beat her for infidelity levels of abuse. This was the 1910s, though. And in our state you couldn't initiate a divorce for cruelty. In fact, the only possible grounds for divorce was infidelity. A few times, she tried just leaving him anyway. Once he came home from work and she, plus all eight of their kids, were just gone. But he always found them. And since they were still married, he had every right to grab the kids and go back home with them. Finally, she moved out and went to live with another man. She flaunted the new guy around town until her no good husband got embarrassed enough to sue her for divorce on the grounds of infidelity. Although she couldn't read or write, she put her ex on those papers the minute he served her. It was a major local scandal, very catholic community. Divorce was rare, but she got what she needed to be safe. Not a divorce lawyer and mainly practice labor law. My country doesn't have divorce so I'm telling you a story of a couple who tried to get an annulment. It's a pretty popular case in our country back in the 80s. Basically wife files for divorce says her husband didn't want to have a six with her or tried to get intimate with her. She claims on their honeymoon hubby tagged along both their moms and uncle and a nephew. Basically the court had them undergo medical tests which confirmed the wife was a virgin. What's horrible and what makes this case so widely known is though the husband was declared to be not impotent for some reason the doctor revealed in court that hubby was capable of getting an erection and I quote. He found out that from the original size of 2, 2, inches, or 5, 5, centimeters, the D of the defendant lengthened by 1, 1, inch and 1 centimeter, dr. Altazer said that the defendant had only a soft erection which is why his D is not in its full length. They really didn't have to do it that. I mean come on. Not a lawyer but I have I've been aching to tell this story for a while. So this girl I went to school with marries this rich guy from Ohio. She moves in with him and they seem to get along well. Six months later she files for divorce. Up to that point. All I've heard from her was how good it was going. Anyways. It turns out our buddy had a fetish for going off on urine. He asked her to urinate on him in the tub. At first she agrees to it as she thought it was a one time thing. But he kept asking for it more and more. She tried to decline it respectfully but he wouldn't get any of the hints. She finally used the tub being too small as a reason. Next day she comes home with two dozen construction guys and their heavy equipment tearing the bathroom walls. A week or so later. They finish up the bathroom. She comes home to a sign left on the fridge with a note to drink up. She got some watering to do. I don't know what exactly she put down as the official reason in the paperwork but that was definitely her biggest reason to walk out of that relationship. Oh I forgot to add. He also wanted to bring a horse to do the deed as well and at times. Asked her to make animal sounds while she stood on top of him.